I feel like even though I don't think that our marriage is per se harder now, because like I said, I don't like that term, we do have to be more intentional about making sure that we are still pouring into each other as mm -hmm. we need to. Mm -hmm. I was recently sharing with my husband that I really, really, really hate the whole like saying that marriage is hard. Marriage is so hard. Like, oh, like marriage. Oh, no, no, no. What is, oh, no. I mean, marriage is work. Don't let anyone tell you what, like, don't let anyone tell you different. Marriage is, is, is hard work. There are a lot of things in life that are hard. And maybe we are just extremely blessed to have a, I don't know, different type of marriage. I don't know. But our marriage is not one of the things in my day to day that I'm like, whoo, this is hard. <laughs> like, this is yeah. hard work. You know, I do think that marriage requires energy. It requires you to be intentional and proactive. But I don't necessarily feel like it's it's hard. Nah, I think it's more so a reflection on how you perceive like marriage. Because it's like, if you go into something with a preconceived notion that it's going to be work, like it's going to be work. Mm -hmm. I can use an example of like basketball. Like up until a certain age... Or after I hit like a certain pinnacle in my life, like basketball never felt like work to me. Yeah. You know, it was just something that I was passionate about that I loved and I just so happened to get paid for it. Like a perfect example, you know, as far as being conscientious about like what you're doing. Hey, I'm going to work. Sounds mm -hmm. a lot different than, hey, I'm going to practice. Right. You know what I mean? And I think we can take all of those things into account is the mindset. It's a mindset thing. It is definitely a mindset thing. I feel like when it comes to our marriage in particular, like I like to think of it as something that I get to do, right? Versus right. something that I right. have to do. Like, you know, I get to cook dinner for my husband. I get to cook him his favorite meal. Mm -hmm. We get to go out on this date. We get to make love to each other you know it's not something that we have to do it's not a chore it's something that we get to do and it is a privilege and a blessing and like thinking about it like that I don't know I feel like it it just allows a lot more room for joy and happiness and excitement instead of dread like I really don't like the whole notion that like marriage is this death sentence and it is just like the hardest thing ever, you know, Man. to maintain a happy marriage. From my perspective, I look at it like all of those things that you named. I looked at it as, as a, a man and like a father, like it's a privilege to be uh, gifted or afforded those things. You know what I'm saying? I think that mindset trickles over into like showing you appreciation mm -hmm. and kind of upholding what I need to as far as being your husband, as far as being, you know, your kids, father, your baby daddy, all, all the above. Um, and I think, you know, anything led in gratitude will sustain. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, that's just my mindset from a husband's perspective. Yeah. Because a lot of guys... Contrary to popular belief, you know, they may dibble and dabble with different women, but how many of them, you know, will get up at 2, 3 a.m. and cook them, cook them a five-course meal? At 2 a.m.? I mean... Not many. That, Not many. <laughs> to me, to me that's, that's real player. Like, okay, you know, you can go on dates, whatever, but will she cook for you? Right. And not just, like, you know, the quintessential pasta or whatever, like, well, she put love and 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 seasoning <laughs> into the dish. That's really player. All the other stuff, you know, all the other stuff, cool. But that's really player. So, although you know, I think that we're on the same page in saying that we don't feel like our marriage in particular is just like really hard or you know a lot of work. I think we do agree that it takes energy you know what I'm saying that we have to dedicate the same energy to our marriage that you would dedicate 
to basketball or I would dedicate to editing this vlog or mm -hmm. whatever. You know, like you have to pour into it and just like you do anything else that you want to be successful. I think that, you know, it goes without saying that even though you like to say that it won't, like having kids does throw a little bit of a monkey wrench <laughs> into marriage. You know, like I won't get into the statistics with you guys, but a lot of couples that don't make it, like it's either related to finances or to parenting and having to now not only be husband and wife, but also be mom and dad and how that transition, you know, changes your marriage. Like I know for us, the transition into parenthood it definitely was a transition, you know what I'm saying? There, there definitely was a change in us, you know, when it was just us and us now as these parents of these two little kids, just because, you know, all that energy that I'm saying it is necessary right. to pour into your marriage, <laughs> like that energy is now, some yeah, of that yeah. is going towards these kids, you, you know? Have, you have to redistribute it and you have to, and I don't even really think it's, it's, it's taking from the aspect of marriage. I think having children takes from every facet of life because now it's like, and I always tell people all the time, like having children made me conscientious of like where my energy was going. Mm -hmm. So like things that I would trip out at, at work or in the gym, it's like, bro, one, I don't have the energy, but then two is like, I'd rather put that energy into my family, yeah. you know, that addressing this minor infraction or this minor issue ain't really worth, you know, the altercation or whatever, the energy transfer back and forth between me and that person. Like, I'd rather put that into my family. So I don't even think it affects just marriage. I think it affects every facet of life. Yeah, I think that parenthood is, like, one of the biggest lessons in, like, time management and energy management that you can ever ever have because like now you don't have all the time in the world all the energy in the world to pour into every aspect of your life like your kids do take so much of it and so with what's left you have to put that you know in the areas that that it's important uh, completely unrelated but just to drive the point home when we first went overseas do you remember Watching Grey's Anatomy, just like aimlessly. Literally, when we first moved overseas for the basketball season, <laughs> all I used to do all day long, like while he was at practice. Okay, so let me just paint a picture of our day before kids. You know what? Let's let's compare. It. I'm gonna paint do a picture. You remember? I do, but it feels remember. like a whole lifetime ago. No. I will paint a picture of my day before kids and my day now so that you guys can see the evolution of Allison, like, as a wife and mother. Yeah. So our first season, we're in Cantu, Italy. He practices usually, like, twice a day. Like, he'll have, like, weights or whatever in the morning, and then he'll have practice in, like, the mid-afternoon, early yeah. evening. So he goes to weights in the morning. Honestly, like I think you probably had weights at about nine usually. Yeah, we would. I remember we would we would have weights and then shooting. Where so would we would, I? Where would you leave me when you went to weights? In bed, right? Where would I be when you came back? In bed. <laughs> yes, like yeah. I used to stay in bed till at least like eleven. Yeah, like for sure. All the sleep. Like now, I'm like. What was I doing? Because it's not even like we would stay up that late. Like we would go to sleep at about midnight. Like, I was averaging about 11 hours of sleep a night. For sure. Or, and I was in, I was playing Euro Cup too that year. So, I was traveling outside of, like, the Italian League. And I remember we would go to the grocery store, like, the day before I would travel. And you would just, and I'm like, why are you getting groceries for, like, two weeks? And she's like, nah, nah. I don't want to leave the house. Yeah, I'm not leaving you're while you're gone. I'm staying in like this Like, I'm apartment. staying here. So, like, literally, like, if he was in town, he would come home. I would make him lunch. I would clean our apartment. Our apartment was always literally, like, spotless. Like, top to bottom. Like, floors mopped. Glass. No streaks. Like, mm -hmm. so clean. Clean our apartment. Start a load of laundry. By this time, it's time for him to leave, to his, leave for his other practice. As okay. soon as he left for practice, I would get in the shower. 
I would shower. I would change my pajamas from yeah. <laughs> the pajamas I slept in yeah. to my lounge pajamas. And I would sit down in front of the TV and I would watch either Grey's Anatomy or One Tree Hill, like, on repeat. Like, like three to four episodes. Yeah. Now, the pajama switch up, that's the, that's the, that's the send off, fellas. Don't fall for it. Yeah. The pajamas switch up, and then when you walk in, and they just act like they just so flustered and so tired. Oh, I've been. You just switch pajamas. So that's what my day would look like then. Now my day is a little bit different. Now I get up in the morning. I make the kids breakfast, get their lunches together, take them to school. Wait, I, I pack lunches sometimes. Occasionally, but he does get the kids dressed for school in the morning yeah. while I am packing their lunches. So. Take the kids to school. Then I go to the gym. I come back. Usually by the time I get back, he's gone for his morning practice. I'll shower. I'll clean up a little bit. I'll get dinner started. He comes back from morning practice. He picks the kids up from school a little bit after he gets back. Mm -hmm. Then the kids are here. They're like, everything that I tidied up is back dirty. So I don't even know why I do that every day. I will wash their uniform so they can hang dry and be ready for the next day. They'll have a snack. Then I will take Harper to whatever after school activity she has, usually gymnastics or swimming. By the time we come back from that activity, he's gone to his evening practice. I'll feed the kids dinner. I'll get them down for the evening. Then I will make his plate of the dinner that I made earlier just in time for him to come in and we'll usually eat together. So. As you guys can see, very different. Like, it's just a, a different amount of time that I have to spend doing things. And so with that being said, I feel like even though I don't think that our marriage is per se harder now, because like I said, I don't like that term, we do have to be more intentional about making sure that we are still pouring into each other as mm-hmm. we need to. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's uh, our family is very big on routine. And uh, even in sports psychology, they say a lot of your pregame jitters or nervousness can be eliminated to some degree with like a pregame routine. Mm -hmm. Because now you put your focus and your mindset into carrying out the routine rather than the outcome of said game or whatever event. And I think for us, getting in the routine and being mindful of, you know, uh, being intimate, being having a sense of togetherness despite, you know, our hustle and bustle schedule. I feel like that has been the biggest thing. You know, um also my wife is a stickler on routine. I am. I'm so, a routine person. You know, that that helps. And my sport background makes it easy for me as well. So, you know, I know that we probably aren't the only parents who have felt the transition from mom and dad to husband and wife and, you know, want to make sure that they are being intentional about continuing to pour into their marriage, you know, after kids. And so we just wanted to share three things that have worked really well for us in terms of, you know, just like maintaining connection and keeping the spark despite having two little ones that are the biggest blockers of the planet. The biggest. Your son especially. Your son, yeah. Your son is, yes. I mean, Harper's just as bad because if we kiss, Harper's like, mm, who's going to kiss me? Mm-hmm. Like, you know. So if you're watching this and you know us, fair warning, don't kiss in front of Harper because for whatever reason, she's of the assumption that if you kiss, you're automatically going to get married. Well, unless you are going to get married. But if you don't, if you're not sure, then don't kiss in front don't of her. Because Harper will be like, when's the wedding? They yeah. kiss. Yeah, so I don't like, know where she got that from. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, we were watching something the other day and two people kissed and she was like, oh, they're married now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. she thinks that if you kiss on the mouth, like, that's your husband. Yeah, that's, like, it's, yeah. it's a done deal. It's a lifetime commitment. I, mean, I don't disagree. That's kind of a good mindset to have for a young lady. I mean, yeah. So, the, you know, years down the line, Harper's future boyfriend, if you're watching this, if, if she kissed you, she's yours forever. 
First of all, we're not going to put that out there. Go, oh go to your point. Gosh. Go to your point. Okay. So, no, no. first thing I feel like that has helped us in terms of being intentional about our marriage as parents, I would say, is rethinking date night. Mm -hmm. So, we love date night just as much as everyone else. It can be fun sometimes to get dressed up and go out for a night on the town. However... Date night doesn't always have to look like that. And I feel like a lot of married couples, if they can't have that traditional date night where the kids are at home with a sitter or a family member and they're, you know, out to dinner or out at a bar, lounge, whatever, at night, they just say, like, throw the whole date away and they don't do it at all. We have had, like, a lot of seasons where we don't really have help with our kids. So we really can't have those types of date nights. And so... We have had to be really creative for like what our dates look like. And I think rethinking what a date has to be has helped us just to make sure that we still have like one on one time with each other, you know, without it always having to be a night out. So, for yeah. example, a couple weeks ago, like while the kids were at school, we went to this restaurant that was on the beach for like a lunch. Like we call mm -hmm. those like our little day dates. And we do that about once a week where we go out for these really fun day dates while and the then, kids are at school. And then we went to the uh, the cafe where we painted. We went to a cafe where we like had coffee and like painted on canvases. So we're just being very, you know, we're, we're not always going on dates at night. Like sometimes we'll go on a date while the kids are at school in the middle of the day and like that means just as much to us. Or even the other night, we went to um, the other couple that's here with us this season. We went to their apartment for date night. And ordered, no one ordered in food, like play cards, watch a YouTube. Yeah, like no one felt like going out. So we were like, you know what? We'll have date night in. And that ended up being a lot of fun. Yeah. I think, and also, too, you can read the, you can use the past as a reference to what a date is. Because if we go back, like, to college, we would just pull up to Whip and Dip at 9 p.m. and just sit in the car, eat ice cream, mm -hmm. listen to the radio, and talk. That's actually, like, one of our favorite things is, like, listening to the radio or, like, listening to audiobooks and, like, drinking coffee or eating ice cream. Yeah. Because the past has always been a reference. Like, during our youth, that's what we always, that was like the foundation of our youth. Um, that always takes us back to those times and it always like makes us reminiscent. Mm -hmm. So a date does not have to be at night. It doesn't have to be at a restaurant per se. Like you can be creative with your, with your dates and just because like you're not able to maybe go out for a night on the town without your kids doesn't mean that the dates won't happen. The second thing, and I know that like this is like an unpopular opinion, and I and I also didn't tell him what my points were before this. So I know he's about to look at me crazy, but it's okay to schedule sex. There is nothing wrong with it. Like people act like, oh my gosh, if you're scheduling sex, like you have no passion in your marriage, and all the romance is gone. That is false. Sometimes, <laughs> like. My husband is a professional athlete. He has practices. He has games. There's things that sometimes we need to schedule around. We have two small children as well. There's things that we need to schedule around. Two nosy small children. Nosy small children. Very nosy. There's nothing wrong to, with scheduling sex. And I honestly think that, you know, it, it helps you stay honest, right? Like, it, it helps you to meet whatever your goal is for your particular relationships on how many times you want to be having sex, how often kind of having a schedule helps to make sure that happens. Now, of course, life happens. You maybe were supposed to have sex on Tuesday. Somebody got sick. It got to be pushed to Wednesday. Obviously, I'm not saying be stringent. And I'm also not saying don't be spontaneous because just because you were supposed to have sex on Tuesday and Thursday, if you want sex on Sunday, you should not not have sex on Sunday just because you were scheduled to have sex on Tuesday and Thursday. Like Nike. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. However, what I am saying is, you know, in being intentional in this stage of our life, 
sometimes having a little bit of a, of a schedule just helps us to make sure that we're keeping things on track. It helps us keep things honest. And I also am like a fan of like extra credit. And so sometimes like, you know, going for, for an extra day is like something that excites me, you know? Mm. <laughs> yeah, what, what she said, what she said. As a, really. as a man, like, how do you feel about scheduling sex? Because on the internet, when you talk about that, people get very up in arms and think that it means, like, that your marriage is dead. Well, I mean, I don't really put too much stock in the internet because people can only see from their perspective. But um, I feel like in any healthy marriage, from a male's perspective... Whatever. As we, long we, as we're having as it. Long, as long as we have it. So now. the issue lies is when it's promised and it's not <laughs> it's not followed through on. Or when I feel like I have to jump through hoops like to earn it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's where the problem lies. But I, that brings up another, and I don't know what your third point is, but touching on what you said about people on the internet. We see all the time, especially with stuff that goes viral, right? We had something go viral with Harper getting her dresses dry clean. And it really showed me where people really project their own issues and insecurities onto other people. And you slowly find yourself making, as my pops would say, they thing, your thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that especially um, when couples have healthy relationships people try to project their own insecurities and, and in their mindset they're like somebody in a relationship has to be oppressed or someone has to be getting the short end of the stick when in reality you know it's a healthy functioning relationship and two people are happy like for instance i don't know why but people feel like you're a tyrant I don't me. know why people think or, that at all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm oppressed. I'm or, actually like low key, like on the scale. You know, I'm I'm kind of submissive, like to him. I mean, I don't know why people think that like he has no say so in our marriage. Like, someone even said on TikTok one time, they were like, "Oh, I feel bad for him." Like, clearly, you wear the pants, and I'm like, I guess I put do I put BDE energy out there? I don't know. Wait, BDE has energy in it. Do I put BDE out there? Like, did they think I'm like, you know, that that's not the case over here. And it's just hilarious because the people that really know us be like. Yeah, that's not the case over here. But, I mean, if y'all do want to help free me from this tyranny, I'm going to leave my GoFundMe down here. Oh, my gosh. But, no, um, in all seriousness, though, uh, yeah, man, don't, don't make other people's thing your thing. Okay, so final tip that I would say in terms of, you know, continuing to be intentional about pouring into your marriage once you become parents is to always, 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 and I think that we have talked about this before in another vlog, but you have to love your significant other in their love language and not yours. And this is true in any relationship regardless of if you have kids or not. But I feel like once you do have kids, especially as a mom and just everything that comes along with the like mental load of motherhood, it's like even more important to remember, you know, remember your spouse's love language and make sure that in everything that you are doing to try to be intentional with them, that you're doing it in a way that they're going to receive it. Because I don't want to pour all this energy into doing something for him when I don't even really have that much energy to pour. And then he doesn't even appreciate it because it's not his love language. And so like, I think that that is just really, really important in this phase of our marriage is to make sure that like, the energy that we are putting into our marriage is energy that is going to be received well by the other person. Like, I'm not going to spend all this time, like, shopping for stuff for him, for example. Receiving gifts has never been his love language. Like, it's just not his thing. What I will spend my time and energy in, though, is making chicken piccata because, like, it's his favorite dinner. And I know he's going to be like, oh, my gosh, like, you took the time out of your day to make this for me, you know? So just, like, be mindful of that as you're operating and as you're thinking about what it is you can do for your spouse. Yeah, I mean, 
I don't know about y'all, but, you know, for my wife, if she come in and, like, the dishes is done. It's going to be a good night for you. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm telling you, if the dishes is done, like, if the, it ain't even the dishes. If the kitchen clean and she got a glass of wine, oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be a good night. It's gonna be it's gonna be a really really like good if night. I if I have like gotten Harper ready for bed and I come back out and like that is off of my to do list like oh, man. say less like I have energy for whatever you want me to have energy Ooh, for hey <laughs> and, and and I'm like and I'm coming from practice and I'm standing I'm like man practice wasn't really that tough today I, I could probably I could probably swing this. But if she, uh, even, and it ain't even got to be you put Harper to bed. Like, if you leave and you come back and you smell, like, Fabulous cleaning, smell. yeah, <laughs> you smell, like, cleaning anything, oh, yeah. man. Uh, That's true. They talk about, uh, what, like, the cologne and pheromones and all that. Mm -hmm. It's in Fabuloso. He knows me well. Call. Those acts of service get me every single time. Tell you, tell you, clean the kitchen. I put a little dab of pine salt right here and, and do this. Oh man! Phew. With that being said, you know we were just talking about how we are being, you know, creative with these date nights or not date nights. You know, having dates at different times and all that stuff. Our kids are still at school. We have. About another two hours before pickup, yeah. and I have planned a special date for you. So we're gonna go get changed, and we're gonna take you guys along <laughs> with us as we go on this date. You ready? Let's do it. So, as always, parenthood is the most beautiful hood, but the most ghetto hood we uh, are on our way for our date that we have been planning and got a message that we needed to pick up the kids from school Harper started running a fever how do you feel Harper oh are you okay yeah we decided to go ahead and pick up Jackson as well. No fever for him, but if we had to pick up one, it made sense to pick up the other. How do you feel, Jackson? Good. Good? You're good? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, as always, even though we are being intentional this Daddy, season about spending... Is we going to be sick for, sick forever? No, you won't be sick forever, baby. You'll be better soon. You'll be better tomorrow, girl. I bet you will. So... As always, even though we are being intentional in this season about, you know, dating and spending quality time, we are mommy and daddy first, so back to mom and dad mode. Yeah. Shut it down, fluids, a lot of screen time. Yeah. Yep. Stay tuned. We will actually be going on our date some other time eventually and we will be sure to take you guys along with us because I was really excited so yeah